In this video, I want to take you through a couple of my energy products that I'm using to leverage additional solar power that I'm generating that's currently going back onto the grid. Um, so I'm going to be showing you the My Energy Eddy, which is I'm using to leverage additional solar to heat my hot water, and I'm also using the My Energy Zappy, again leveraging additional solar to charge my car. So if you'd like to know some more details about those and understand how I'm using them, stick around and watch the video, uh, and hopefully you'll find it useful. Thanks for watching. So to start off with then, I just want to give you uh, an overview of the current situation with my solar panels and battery and my energy products and then I'll kind of drill down into those specific my energy products for the Eddy and Zappi. So my um, solar journey probably started a couple, of, a couple of years ago now with the solar panel installation. I live in a bungalow in the south of England, um, so we, we do get some, su some sunshine in the summer months and a little bit in the winter actually. Um, I've got a, an 8.7 kilowatt array which is on the um, southeast side of my property, so I get lots of solar first thing in the morning um, around to kind of mid late afternoon and then it kind of tapers off a little bit so not an ideal position for panels but it seems to be working quite well and i'm using the solar edge eight kilowatt inverter um, so obviously when the sun's shining um, i can start consuming electricity but at this point i was wasting a lot, of a lot i was wasting a lot of electricity uh, and it was going back onto the grid, so I wanted to leverage that. So maybe six to eight months later, I had the Tesla Powerwall 2 installed. So for any additional um, energy that I was generating from the solar panels, rather than um, wasting it by putting it back onto the grid, although I did get a little bit of money from Octopus, um, actually conserving that, that power in the uh, in the battery helps because then I can use it during the course of the day or or probably mostly overnight when everyone comes home from school and work and starts cooking and things like that so if I was to start again I would get the panels and the battery all in one go because it makes a good all-round solution um, back earlier this year so we're in 2024 now so in February time this year I had uh, a Daikin Altherma uh, air source heat pump installed um, so it's kind of towards the end of last winter and we're now just going into the winter months so it may be in six months time I can give you a, a more detailed report on how that's worked but I'm super pleased with it so far on the milder months that we've had um, things seem to be working well um, and I'm just out of interest I'm with Octopus Energy and I'm on their cozy tariff so I get three rates cheaper rates a day so 7 a.m. sorry 4 a.m. till 7 a.m. 1 p.m. till 4 p.m. and 10 p.m. till midnight are cheaper rates for me to use electricity so um, that's when I've configured the um, air source heat pump to heat the water um, and heat the house um, I've got the, I'll go into the Eddy in some more detail shortly, but I've got the Eddy that I'm using as well. So if I do have additional solar that's not being used in the house, it's not being used by the battery, then the third thing that's going to happen is the Eddy will detect surplus energy going back onto the grid and start redirecting that energy into the immersion on the water tank. So that's doing a fantastic job heating the water up as well. And then finally, and again, I'll go into this in some more detail. Um, I bought an electric car earlier this year, the Tesla Model Y, and I've bought a Zappi EV charger. And I do have a separate video on the installation and setup of that as well. So I'm using the EV charger to charge my car as well. So again, um, when I've got additional solar that's available and it's not going into the house, it's not going into the battery, it's not heating the water, then if the, um, if the Zappi detects that we've got 100% green energy 
going back onto the grid, then it'll redirect that into charging the car, assume it's at home plugged in at that point in time. If not, it'll charge overnight on one of those cheaper rates. All these things are connected to the internet, so as you can imagine, there's an app for everything. There's a lovely app for my energy products, and I'll show you that. That's kind of my go-to app to see everything that's going on, so I'll, I'll do a demo of that later in the video. Um, hopefully that was useful. I'll now get into the details around the Eddy. So what I'll do now is I'll take you through how I've got my Eddy installed. Um, I will kind of overlay some other images of kind of real-time configuration and um, videos on how um, how the actual device to connect up but I've kind of got a pictorial representation of here just so you can understand how it's set up and then we'll go into the details. So as I said the My Energy Eddy is a device that you use in your home to leverage excess solar. So in my configuration I've got the Eddy installed so when it detects um, excess solar going back onto the grid the eddy then will redirect that solar into your immersion you know in my case into my immersion heater on my hot water uh, it's also my understanding you can use that for underfloor heating or electric radiators or i guess any, anything electric where you want to store energy in water so the starting position with mine was um the starting position with mine was um, I had the electricity there obviously, I had a switch fuse spur as you can see here which was controlling my um, immersion. So if I wanted to use the immersion then I would switch that on. So with the eddy, once the eddy is installed, um, there was two parts of this, the, the eddy itself which is the brains of it and then you've also got the Harvey. So the Harvey's used, and I'll go into some more detail in a minute, but the Harvey's used essentially to detect um, electricity flow in the house. So just flicking back on that, because that happened quite quickly. So if you look at the lines at the bottom here, so this is the live neutral and earth that's going directly from the switch fuse spur into the immersion on the water. When this was installed, you basically take the electricity supply and pass it through the My Energy Eddy. So then that becomes the point where the electricity is directed into the um, into the uh, immersion heater based on that additional power, and then the Eddy will communicate with the Harvey over a radio network. So the way that it works then is you have this thing called a CT clamp, current transformer clamp, um, which you will wire into your Harvey and the clamp end, so this black block here with the arrow on it, will be clipped around your live cable that you want to monitor. So my Harvey is downstairs next to my fuse board and um, where the electricity comes into the building. So it's then easy to clamp the cable onto those, um, onto those cables. So I've got a CT clamp for solar generation, which is connected into the Harvey, which is then clipped onto the live cable that's coming from the solar edge into my local fuse board, my kind of secondary distribution board that provides the electricity for the solar and vice versa. And then the second CT clamp I've got on there, current transformer clamp, is connected to the meter tails in the consumer cup, consumer user cupboard, consumer user cupboard outside of the house. So then that can detect the flow of electricity, how much is coming into the building and how much is going out. And then my energy uses that data to understand you know, where, where electricity is and what, what can be used where. So 
up here I've just added a couple of arrows so you'll notice on the CT clamp there's an arrow and it's important that you clip that on the right way round because you want to detect the flow of electricity based on what you're doing. So for my CT clamp for solar generation I've got the arrow pointing towards the consumer unit away from the solar edge and then that detects the flow of electricity correctly and on my CT clamp grid I've got the arrow pointing towards the flow coming into the building from the grid and that's the, the way it needs to be configured. Um, so this my energy unit that I've got installed comes integrated with what they call a V-hub so that hub in my case is has a Wi-Fi connection directly to my Wi-Fi router so it can talk to the internet and I can understand what's going on with the app itself and I'll give you a demo of the app a little bit later on. So in this scenario this got a gorgeous sunny summer's day in England um, we've got power available from um, the sun so as I said on the previous slides if there's um, available excess solar that's not going into the battery then I'm redirecting that into my thermal storage I guess my my hot water tank so the energy, my, ener my energy eddy and Harvey will be looking at that current flow using those CT clamps and seeing if there's any additional excess power going back out, sorry, on the live cable, back out onto the grid. And if there is, then it'll actually say, actually, we don't want to put that out. We want to put that into the storage until that's heated up. Like that. So that's as straightforward as that. I'll show some screenshots overlaying onto this so you can actually see the configuration on the screen and I'll show you a little um, visual of how it's actually um, configured in my house which is uh, in the loft with my um, air source heat pump. So hopefully that was useful. Thanks. So let me take you through some of the settings. You can see there the power consumption on the grid. Um, this is the main menu. Those are the devices that I've got configured. So the Zappi, Eddy, Harvey and the Hub, which is integrated into the Hub's integrated into the Eddy. So you could go into pairing mode. So I mentioned earlier about the Zappi as the slave. So if you wanted to add it as a slave or another device as a slave, you can go into pairing mode. And you can see here the Eddy is the master and it's the V-Hub. So the local CT clamps, as I mentioned earlier, I've got um, my air source heat pump set up in there. And those were all my devices. In the Harvey, if you remember, that's where the CT clamps are connected. So I've got the grid connected, I've got the um, solar connected, and I've got the AC battery connected. So from a grid point of view, it's single phase, 65 amp network limit, which I mentioned earlier. So I'll never consume more than that based on the energy, uh, the my energy configuration. And my export margin is 50 watts. So anytime I'm detecting more than 50 watts going back onto the grid, I start redirecting it back into my energy infrastructure. Okay, so what I'll do now then is give you um, an overview of where the Zappi, the EV charger, fits into the equation. So hopefully a lot of this will look familiar. I spoke about the Harvey earlier and the fact that it uses a radio signal to talk to the My Energy Eddy. I've got um, a separate consumer unit, or well, fuse board as some people might know it, as in the garage and my Zappi I've installed outside my garage and you can see a separate video on that that I'll try and put in the 
description below that shows the installation and configuration of that Zappi so you can see how that's done. Um, My Energy have this concept of master and slave so what you need to do is when you add a second device so in this case my second device is the Zappi but I know other people have got them the other way around and you've got the Zappi as the master and you add the Eddie as the slave it just depends on when they've, when they've been installed. So I've um, added my Zappi as a slave and I'll just try and show you on the screen where to do that in, in the configuration and um, add, add that into the configuration. And then the Zappi will communicate with the, <clears throat> with the My Energy Eddie over the radio network, this little antenna thing here, and um, be able to understand or share the information that's, uh, that the Harvey's picking up from these CT clamps. So the couple of important things here is, um, as I said earlier, so I've got solar being generated, excess solar going into the battery. If the battery's full, then my hot water gets heated up. Once the tank's fully heated, then uh, my car will be charged. Um, in addition to that, using the solar tariffs that I've got from uh, Octopus Energy, I'm charging my car up at those off-peak times as well to make use of those tariffs. So what the what you can do in the master device, so in the Eddy, is configure a, mass, um, um, a maximum amp rating. So the, the, what, what I've got it set to is 65 amps. So um, if the My Energy solution detects that um, everything that's consuming electricity starts to pull more than 65 amps from the grid, then the car, the car will stop charging, for example, or the um, My Energy Eddy will stop charging because we don't want to overload the grid and you certainly don't want to be overloading your house with, with uh, electricity. Imagine you've got your car charging, the water's being heated up, you've got your electric hob on, your induction hob, your oven on, and I don't know, what, whatever else uses um, lots of electricity. If those all add up, then, then you could start to cause problems in your house, so it's important to have that, that ceiling limit um, in place. Um, that's all I want to say on this one. I'm going to go into a demo using the app now, so you can see how, um, how I'm using the app and how all of this lovely information is being surfaced up into the application. What I'm going to do now then is take you through the My Energy app. So um, hopefully as you can see on the screen here, all, these are all of the um, devices and um, the information being surfaced up from those CT clamps. So we've got um, my solar panels which are generating 4.8 kilowatts of electricity um, that electricity is either going directly into the house uh, the top there 0.6 kilowatts at the moment or is going into the battery so I've got 4.2 kilowatts of energy going into the battery at the moment so I guess just talking around the screen so you know what all the different things are the purple one at the top is the house and then we've got the grid, which is the second one round to the right. Um, and then we've got the solar, which is generating 4.8. I've added an additional CT clamp to um, my eddy to monitor the flow of electricity into my air source heat pump as well, which is this one that's kind of at 5 o'clock here on the screen. And then my battery, it's got 4.2 kilowatts of energy going into it. And then the one on the left at what 8 o'clock is my uh, hot water. So there's nothing going into that at the moment. It's all going into the battery. And then uh, at kind of 10 o'clock here, we've got my car zappy charger. So that's how it's displayed. So I really like this screen because it's just in one one easy visualization you can see everything that's going on so now we can see a bit of energy going into the uh, into the eddy as well so it's heating the water um, so let's go through these different icons now so under home 
We can see consumption history of what's going on. So at the moment you can see the real time rate of 1.4 kilowatts going into the house. And I do have a separate dashboard in Home Assistant as well that I use that kind of surfaces all this data up so I can see which devices are using the power and try to understand that a little bit more. And if there's things on there that are using power at the wrong time of the day, then I can do something about that. Um, next one is the solar panels. So I, I tend to use my Solar Edge app if I want the real details of what's going on with each individual panel. So if there's any problem panels or if the neighbor's hedges need cutting down because they're blocking the panels on the roof, then I, I can see that sort of stuff. But in here we can see the generation history. Um, I'm not going to get any data on my heat pump because it's just a, a real-time representation of the well, of what's happening at that point in time. So at the moment, nothing's happening with that. So I know the, um, the air source heat pump isn't consuming any electricity. And again, on the battery, there's no um, uh, historical data for that. It's just a kind of real-time view, which again is handy just for a point-in-time view. But... Uh, again, with the Tesla app itself, you can actually go into that and see the historical data um, for, the, for the battery. And then for My Energy Eddy, you would expect to have information in there. So you can see at the bottom where I've been consuming electricity. Um, I've only got one tank in use. And then under tanks, I can schedule if I want my eddy to um, just fire up and use grid electricity or battery electricity at any point in time um, but I tend to use it mainly for just using that excess solar so you can configure diff different schedules so if you wanted your eddy to heat your water up at one of those cheaper tariff hours then you could do that uh, and then the car itself so in here, I've got it set to Eco Plus mode. So the charge rate continuously adjusts in response to changes in generation or power consumption elsewhere in the home, thereby, thereby minimizing the use of grid power. So I only want to charge the car if we've got a 100% green situation. So at, at the point where I've got all of my excess energy going out onto the grid, um, then we'll redirect, redirect that into the car. So you can see, in fact, I'll go through the schedule first. So I've got schedule set up based on my Octopus Energy tariffs. So if the car's plugged in between 4 and 7 in the morning for that three-hour window, Monday through to Sunday, then I want you to just charge the car. I don't, I don't care what's going on. And the same between 1 in the afternoon and four in the afternoon for those three hours it's just going to charge the car regardless of what's going on because i know i'm getting cheaper electricity but if outside of that time if the car's plugged in and there's excess solar then uh, the zappy will pick that up and just start charging the car anyway so the last bit that i want to show you then is this little leaf symbol in the middle so you can see at the moment that's at 74 percent so that means i'm i've been 80 percent now 80 percent efficient with my electricity so if i go into that you can see a bit more detail so um today i have consumed 48.8 kilowatts of electricity <clears throat> and generated 8.6 kilowatts of electricity. Uh, I've imported 39.5 kilowatts from the grid, consumed 8.3 generated kilowatt hours, and I've exported 0.3 kilowatt hours. So that's good from that point of view because I want to be consuming as much energy as possible rather than exporting it to the grid. And then there's a nice little um, chart there that shows imported versus consumed. So imported is going to be high. 
as I was showing you earlier, the um, car was plugged in last night charging, so it was charging in the early hours between 4 and 7 a.m. So that big, dirty, big spike of red there is my car charging up. It was quite low yesterday, so that's why we are where we are with that. Um, I assume you can go back and see what the consumption was like yesterday and then this week, 28% this month. We're only on the 8th of October today, so we're not very far into the month. But the, you get the idea, so it, it shows you how green you're being as well. So that was um, that's a useful thing to see. And now it's one o'clock, just gone one o'clock in the afternoon. So I'm now in one of my cozy tariff windows, which is between one and four p.m. So at the moment, um, you can see I'm pulling quite a lot of electricity from the grid. So I'm charging the battery up, and I'm also um, consuming electricity through my air source heat pump. So I assume that's heating water as well at the moment and I've got 3.8 kilowatts of solar contributing to helping with all that. So hopefully that was useful. Uh, it's a really great product. Um, I'm really enjoying using it and I particularly love this screen so we can see now that um, I've got some electricity going into my eddy as well. So that was well timed. Okay, hopefully that's useful. Thank you. That brings me to the end of the video. Hopefully you found it useful. Uh, just wanted to provide some kind of information about the My Energy products because they're, they're really great if you've got solar panels and you want to make maximum use of the energy they're producing, then I think the Eddy is great for heating your hot water and your the Zappi that works as part of that ecosystem uh, is great for charging your car as well. So if you've got any questions or comments or thoughts, then please don't share them with me. If you found the video useful, then please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you very much for watching and hopefully see you in another video. Thanks, bye.